Hello there. My name is Goopy, and I am Masuo's text-to-speech bot. Mio. Text-to-speech bots are one of the most popular assets for people to use in streaming, but also one that can be very difficult to set up. I made my own text-to-speech bot using Clip Studio Paint, Live 2D, and VTS Pog to create a text-to-speech bot that can respond to my chat. Today, I'm going to walk you through the process so that you can hopefully set up your own. The first step is settling on a design for your little buddy. My text-to-speech bot QP is a cat plush, but the one I'm going to be working on today with you is based off of an eastern red bat. This is a text-to-speech bot for my friend, maybe Margot, and with her permission, I'm going to be showing it to you all today. With that in mind, this is the design that I ended up going with. I can't help you with the design process, so that's something you'll have to battle on your own. If you don't really know where to begin with this, the best advice I can offer is that the symmetry tool is your best friend. This can also be a really helpful place to start learning how to do model cutting and learning how to do rigging if you're new to Life 2D and want to get some experience. Once you've made your design, you're going to need to cut your model into the appropriate pieces. I made my layers already with cutting in mind since this is something that I've done in the past, but if you're new to this, you can basically just stick to the following guidelines. You're going to want to have a separate head with separate eyes and mouth. You'll want to have separate arms, separate legs, a separate body. And if you have any outfit pieces, those are things that you're going to want to keep separate as well. My example here will probably be a little different than what you'll have if you're making a cat or a dog or something else that is semi-normal. Since this is a bat, I'm not going to have arms, but instead I'm going to have wings. An important thing to note is that Live2D has a reflection feature. So if there are any parts of your model that are symmetrical on both sides, such as the arms, legs, eyes, you only need one half of it saved in your file. By doing just one half, we'll only have to rig that one piece rather than trying to rig both pieces separately. Once we have our art finished, we'll want to do a little upkeep on our file to make things easier in the long run. By this, I mean make sure that every single one of your layers is appropriately labeled, as well as in corresponding folders. You'll also just want to run through and make sure you delete any sketch or reference layers so that the file we save is just the art that we're going to be using for the model. Save this file as a PSD and then move into Live2D. I use the pro version of Live2D, but because of how simple this is, you should be able to use the free version and still accomplish everything you need. Once we have Live2D open, we're going to open up the PSD file that we just saved and we'll get to work right away. To make this as simple as possible, you can just select all of your art meshes at once using Control shift and clicking the top and bottom one, which should highlight everything in between as well. And then you can just go over to the Auto Mesh Generating button. From this point, I'll create deformers for all of my different groupings of pieces just to stay a little more organized. So for instance, the head, the body, the wings in my case, and then within the head I also create separate deformers for the eyes and the mouth. For the eyes, we'll go ahead and just select one of the eye open parameters on the side and then select our eyepiece. The eye is one of the pieces that we're going to be reflecting, so we only need to worry about one half right now. Add in two keyframes, and then we'll get to work deforming this piece into its closed position. You can mess around with this until it looks how you want. I like to go back through and move between the keyframes to see what it looks like in transition to make sure that it moves pretty naturally. I also mess with the opacity of the eye shimmeries here so that they aren't visible when the eye is closed. And I adjust the Y position of the angry lines here so that when the eye is closed, it lowers as well for a more natural movement. Once you're happy with it, you can select the entire deformer and the eye objects within, and then copy and paste it. Make sure you delete any rotation deformer that appears when you duplicate this, and then you can go ahead and select this new duplicated deformer and its objects, and just right click and reflect it. It should flip perfectly to the other half of your model, and now when you use the eye open parameter, you'll see them both open and close. You should only need to rig this onto one of the eye open parameters, so that both eyes open and close at the same time. But if you want your text-to-speech bot to be able to wink, then you can just change the parameters on the other eye by right clicking and change it so that the movement is applied to the opposite eyes parameter. Now for the mouth, again, we're just going to do a very simple open and close here. The bat that I'm making for Margot is always going to have her mouth partially open, so there won't be a true close position. 
Your math complexity will also depend on the model that you've made, and it'll vary case by case. For instance, with Cupy, I made skin around the lip to hide the background of his throat. Whereas on this model, since it's so much simpler, I just made the throat start and end where the lips are, and deformed it as needed. Following the same idea as the eyes by creating two keyframes for the open and close positions, you can just adjust the positions to your liking, double check the transition movements between them, and pretty soon you should have a working mouth. Now for the actual body movements and everything, I went very simple for this bat. I essentially only rigged a head raise up and head lowering down for the up down Y movements, and that is it. QP on the other hand has XY angles for his head as well as Z rotations for head swing. In addition to head movements, I also gave him some simple bouncy animations for moving left to right, up and down, and swaying side to side. Now for the part where you get to be really creative with your rigging. We're going to be moving on to the physics. When I first started rigging, I had absolutely no idea how to navigate any of the physics screens and it was a total mystery to me, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along with what I do here. You're going to create physics as needed for your movements, and then we're going to go under the modeling tab on the top of Live2D's interface, and then drop down to the very last option, which should be physics settings, which will then open up a new window. This is the physics settings window, AKA a very confusing place that you can easily get lost in. We're gonna create a new physics group, title it wings, and then under the input parameters, we'll add the angle Y physics. What this is essentially doing is saying that the physics we're about to create are going to be affected by the angle Y parameter. So when the angle Y parameter starts moving, it'll essentially domino affect everything else. Now we're gonna head down to the pendulum settings and add three pendulums in to represent the three wing parameters that I created earlier. Now we'll move from the input settings tab over to the output settings and under the dropdown, we'll select the three wing parameters we just created. You'll probably have to mess around with the numbers and effectiveness of everything, but eventually you'll have something working a little bit like this. You're gonna follow this same concept of creating the physics rules for everything that you want to move and jiggle. With Cupy, for instance, I wanted him to have some extra squish since he's a plushie, so I created bounce physics parameters that are affected by his body X and Y movements so that when he moves, he squishes a little bit more. I'm gonna continue using Cupy as my example here for a quick rundown of doing clothes or ribbon physics. I created some really simple parameters for the ribbon, just called ribbon bounce one and ribbon bounce two, and I also had them be affected by the X and Y body inputs. Another type of physics really worth exploring is ear physics. I learned to do my ear rigging by following a tutorial by Cutie Dragon, and I highly recommend checking out their stuff. They have some really valuable study files. All of this might take you a few tries to get to a place that you're happy with, so don't be afraid to take multiple attempts to get things right. Once you have all of your physics and movements to a point that you're happy with, we can start to export it. You'll need to edit your texture atlas and all of your art meshes in before you can export this. You can have Live2D automatically do this for you, but you'll probably end up having to make some manual edits no matter what. With your texture atlas complete, you can proceed with exporting this as a Mach 3 file and save it into VTube Studio. If you don't know how to get into your VTube Studio files, it's something worth memorizing. If you're on Windows, you can generally just go to your PC's drive, then into Programs Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, and then find VTube Studio from the list of programs. Once inside the VTube Studio folder, you'll go into the Data folder and then the Streaming Assets folder, and finally select the Live2D Models folder. Create a new folder for your bot and then save your Mach 3 file within that folder. Now for the setup with VTS Pog. I already have my VTS Pog integrated with my VTube Studio program, so unfortunately, I can't go backwards and run you through the process. However, if you just follow the instruction setup for VTS Pog, you should be able to get it up and running. Once they're integrated, you can select your soon-to-be text-to-speech bot from under the VTube Studio models, auto-set it up, and then to make it work with VTS Pog, you're going to go into the model settings, scroll down until you find the Mouth Open tab. Instead of whatever parameter it automatically filled in for the input here, we're going to instead select it, and then scroll until you find Voice Volume plus Mouth Open 2. You want to be sure you have the 2 here. If it doesn't have the 2, it's not the right one. You can adjust the smoothing here as necessary to make it move correctly, and now you should be able to enter in some test text and see if your little bot will speak. With VTS Pog, you have a pretty big library of voice options, so you can go through and test them out until you find one that you're happy with. 
All you need to do now is integrate VTS Pog with Twitch and you should have a fully working text-to-speech bot. You'll need to create your own redeems if you want people to be able to redeem text-to-speech options. If you wanna take it one step further and make it so that your bot can think on its own and respond to chat, you're gonna to have to make one more integration between VTS Pog and that is with OpenAI. You can adjust your bot's personality using VTS Pog's personality configurations. And once everything has been filled out, your little bot buddy will be ready to hang out with you on your streams. I hope going through this process with me was able to help you with at least getting started on creating your own bot or maybe point you in the right directions of where to start. And if you're interested in having a text-to-speech bot of your own, but you aren't big on the process of making one, then please consider reaching out to me on my VGen and commissioning me to make one for you. Otherwise, I'm Masuo. And I'm Cupid. And we're sending you some of Cupid's love.